Hi, in this video, I want to show you how you can customize the Reflect Viewer using Unity Pro and to help you do so in a very easy way. I'm going to share with you a Unity template that you can use to kickstart your Reflect Custom Viewer development. So I need to stress that this template is not supported and it is just distributed as is. I'm going to put the, the link to the download in the video description. And so what you're going to need to do is simply to take the file and it's a TGZ file and you want to put it in the uh, editor template. So this is the, uh, the path. You want to put this in program files, ELD, hub, editor, and so on. So I'll also share the complete path to where you need to put that template in. And once you've done that, then all you need to do is to start the Unity Hub. And when you go and create a new project, you want to choose the, uh, the version uh, of Unity that you've installed the template in. So there I'm using the, uh, the brand new 19.4 uh, uh, LTS version. And what you can see is that now along with the other templates uh, such as 2D, 3D, 3D with extras, high definition, and so on. I also have a new Reflect Custom Viewer template that allows me to create uh, a, a new custom viewer for Reflect. So I'm going to call this uh, my custom viewer like this. And I'm simply going to uh, create these new uh, project, what it's going to do is that it's going to create a new project out of this template. It's already going to set up everything that you need inside of your project to be able to start modifying the, uh, the existing viewer. So it's going to add dependencies on the reflect package and it's going to contain everything you need to create your custom viewer. So Let's take a look at this template. Whenever you start the editor with this uh, new project, then you'll notice that you have a tutorial info that shows in the inspector uh, here. It gives you a little bit of uh, information uh, on uh, what's in this package. Uh, then if you lose track of it and want to be able to find it again, then you can go to the menu and find show tutorial instructions, and then you'll find those instructions again. Now, by default, the Reflect Custom Viewer scene will be opened. Uh, one of the things that uh, we may want to notice is that the, if you go in the Package Manager, you will see that Unity Reflect is already in there. It's been brought in by the template. Now, we can also go into the Project Settings, and you can notice that everything in there has been already set up for you to, uh, to, to use, which is the, uh, the splash screen and everything. And I'll get back to this in a moment. Now, uh, what we also want to, uh, to find here is the uh, Reflect uh, Viewer, Custom Viewer scene, in which we have a Re Reflect Custom Viewer uh, prefab. So if you select the prefab, you can notice that it's already in the assets. It's already a prefab. It's a prefab that we can edit, so it's not the original prefab that comes from the package. It's a duplicate, so it's yours to edit, yours to modify. Uh, the best way to, to do this is to actually jump into the uh, prefab editing mode, uh, just like this. You probably also want to jump into 2D mode, which makes it easier uh, to actually manipulate the, uh, especially the UI for the custom viewer. You will also see that uh, in here, a lot of uh, what we uh, have in, in there, everything has been set up so that you have a lot of uh, instructions as to uh, where to put your custom canvases. So you can uh, find this is just an instruction to tell you where to put the, the canvases. There you have a custom canvas that is already set up with a button and with a UI. There, the button already uh, has a custom icon that you can also change. And then you also have the UI here. And there it tells you to add your custom UI here. And there you have an example panel to which you can add uh, everything you need. One of the things that is nice when you want to uh, edit uh, this, you may also uh, 
want to isolate your canvas because you can see that by default, especially in edit mode, everything is just stacked on, on top of each other. So you have like all the buttons and all the all the canvases. So if you use the uh, shortcut Shift H, then this is going to go into isolation mode, and so it's going to hide everything but your selection. And this gives you uh, a bit of freedom when it comes to uh, add your custom items in there. Now I'm just going to jump out of the prefab editing mode. As you can see, there's also some existing overrides, and that's the uh, an interesting concept in there. Uh, I've added as overrides uh, some uh, features that come as scripts that you can find in here. There's a, a couple of things in there. There's a uh, an unstart event, and there's a reflect project view info panel which allows you to show the information on the view that comes from Revit uh, and, and allows you to snap the camera to what the view was. So if we actually just uh, take a look at what this does, I'm just going to uh, run the viewer in the editor just like this, and then I can open the webinar school uh, just like this. So when the project is loaded, then it's just like the uh, standard viewer. You can navigate the view and everything. But what you can notice is that when you click on this new custom button there, this is going to show you the view information. So you get all the information about the, the camera that you had in Revit uh, like this. And if you click on this button, then this is going to snap the camera to this uh, to the position of where you had the, the camera in Revit when you exported the view. Now let's just take a, a quick look at uh, how this was made. Uh, if we take a look at the uh, the custom uh, canvas that we have here, then you'll find in the UI there's the example panel. And as overrides, we have uh, a few things. So let's just uh, isolate this so that we get to see uh, what we have here, uh, what we have is a, a title that is a, a text mesh pro uh, that allows you to change the other uh, title. Then we also have a scroll view. Part of the scroll view in the viewport, uh, we have another content uh, text mesh pro, which allows us to uh, put some text in there. And then eventually we have a match view button here. Now on the example panel itself, we have a script that is right here, of which you can actually display the, uh, the sources. And so you get to see how to interact with metadata. Uh, so basically what this is going to do is that it's going to, whenever you click on the panel, uh, it's going to uh, update the information. So it's going to look for a point of interest, which is a custom object in Reflect to find the, uh, the, the points of interest coming from uh, Revit. And then it's going to uh, also add as a listener to the button, it's going to add the event to say that you want to align the camera uh, to this. And then it's also going to read all the metadata to print them into the, uh, in, into the, uh, the, the text area here. Now, when we look at uh, this one here, then it has a few uh, fields and you can see that it expects the other uh, free camera. So you want to give it the free camera controller, which is the, the camera that sees the scene when you're in screen mode. Uh, and you also have in here a, the button. So it, this points to the, uh, to the button here, uh, the view info text, which is the text around here. And another important point here is the reflect sync route. So the, the reflect sync route is here. This is where everything is going to be instantiated whenever you load a Reflect project. Whenever you load a project in Reflect, then every 3D object, every object coming from the Reflect server are going to be instantiated uh, as a child of that object. So this is also why I've renamed it with arrows to point this out, because if you, whatever you want to do on top of the content, this is a very good place to hook. Uh, to actually grab all the scene uh, when you load a project. So now if you want to say, for example, start from scratch, one of the things that you can do is I've added everything, like you can see that the script here 
is it added as an override in the scene so it's not in the prefab itself and all the uh, hierarchy here is also added as a uh, as a uh, uh, an override then you can also easily just uh, go here and then say that you want to uh, revert this so you can go and say uh, revert so this is going to remove this component here and you can also right click here and say added game object revert uh, or you can also just select the, the whole prefab and find all the overrides and then say revert all but actually before we go and revert everything uh, I'm just going to revert those like this and this one and before we go and, and revert everything we're just going to take a quick look at the splash screen because the, the splash screen also has uh, as of right, I've removed the uh, the splash screen, the reflect custom splash screen component, and the audio source, and I've replaced it with an uh, unstart event that somehow replaces those two components to just jump right into uh, the reflect UI, so that you can take advantage of the built-in uh, splash screen uh, function of the of uh, Unity. So this is also something that you can easily revert if you want. Uh, another thing that you can find in here is the uh, the logo. So you can find that this logo is here. It points to a an image that you find in UI. Quick thing to notice about the UI folder is that in the scripts editor folder, there's a custom script that's called uh, image import rules. And what this is going to do is that it's going to automatically uh, turn all the images that you drop into your UI folder as a proper 2D image. So you don't have to worry about uh, whether you import properly the images as uh, sprites or as just uh, standard textures. Everything you throw in the UI folder will be properly converted to a, an icon or to a sprite so that you can easily use it into the UI system or into other uh, areas where a, a sprite is expected. So that's uh, another thing that is also part of the uh, template. A few other things about the uh, template, also the uh, post-processing. Uh, this is a, the custom post-processing that is being used in here so that you can also modify it yourself. Everything is in there, so if you want to play with the ambient occlusion uh, uh, properties or add some bloom or automatic uh, exposure controls and things like this, like, then you can really uh, play with uh, all those uh, settings. Uh, the, and this allows you to actually uh, enhance the, uh, the look and feel of the uh, viewer. Uh, you also have the, 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 the default reflect sound is still in here. So if you want to use it anywhere else, then you can. If you want to bring another uh, WAV file or MP3 file, then you can also bring it in here and use it in different uh, places. And so once you're happy with what you've created as a custom viewer, then what you can do is then just go back into the project settings. Uh, and what you can find in the project settings, you can change the, uh, the default icon, then you want to change the, uh, the company name, maybe the, uh, the name of the product. And also, you can find the uh, splash screen that you find in here. So there, I've assigned the Reflect logo here, the default Reflect logo. And uh, so what you can do with this is that you can also just uh, uh, select this one and just uh, actually let's just remove this. And then what we can do is just uh, do a, a quick preview. So we can do something like this uh, or let's just make them all sequential and then I can add this one uh, after uh, the other so you get your logo if you want to customize this and then you can replace this with your logo then it's going to be followed by the uh, made with unity logo or you can disable this as if you are using unity pro anyway so you can easily just get rid of uh, the, the made with unity logo if you want and so once you're done with all this then all you need to do is then go to the build settings uh, in the build settings, the scene, the currently open scene, is already there, assigned as the other uh, the, uh, the open scene. And then all you need to do is then just simply go and click on build or build and run. And this is going to build the final executable that you can share with anyone to 
uh, as your uh, very own custom reflect viewer so i hope this is going to make it easier for you to create your own custom viewers and to customize the uh, either for branding or for adding uh, new features i'll add the links to uh, the template in uh, the simple instructions as to how to install this template uh, in the uh, in the editor in the video description and uh, please if you uh, find this useful please like uh, the video uh, subscribe also to the channel because i'm probably going to uh, promote a few other templates soon enough and until then thank you very much for watching